Well, hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back. I cannot wait to dive into the full moon in Virgo with you today. We're going to be looking at the astrology. We're going to be looking at the human design. And of course, if you stay to the end, because the feedback was so amazing about having the very end of this video talk specifically about the human design aura types. So I will do that again today and I'm going to timestamp it. Yes, that's right. We're getting better with everyone. So make sure you comment below and like subscribe. Tell me what you thought was the most impactful piece of these videos so that I can do more of that and less of the things you don't like. Welcome to those of you who are brand new. I'm Tara Kinden, founder of Lady Creators and a mad creator myself. I'm also an astrologer and human design expert. You know, speaking to the cosmos is kind of my jam. For those of you who are returning clients and customers, welcome back. I am so grateful that you are here and sharing your wonderful energy with me at every phase and stage. It's so awesome to be able to watch you grow, evolve, and expand. Let's dive in. We're going to start with the astrology first. I'm going to share my screen with you. And we're going to see how succinct I can make this video. All right, here you go. This is the gorgeous chart of the full moon in Virgo, which is happening on February 24th, 2024. And you will see when it's a full moon, we've got the sun on one side of the chart and we've got the moon on the other side of the chart. This particular chart is very interesting to me because uh, we're in Pisces season. I, I'm just going to say obviously, but not everybody knows. We're in Pisces season. And this means, you know, more flow, a beautiful time to get rid of limiting beliefs or things that are in your way, holding you back, uh, your mind. This is a really wonderful time to do mind reprogramming work, subconscious belief stuff to get it up to the surface and clear it out. Now, Pisces is a more emotional sign, but it's also more intuitive and creative and opens us up. And I know I'm talking about Pisces because we're in Pisces season and this video is about Virgo, the full moon, but I need to give you some background so you can kind of feel like, okay, we're in this season, but this is the, the full moon. So again, Pisces wants you to get creative. It wants you to explore the depths of who you are. So if you've been avoiding those things, this is the perfect season to go at it and dig up the dig up the roots that need to be the weeds that need to be pulled out so that you can start planting some beautiful new things for yourself. And full moon is when things kind of come to fruition. That sort of full moon is when we see the results of our labors. Now, you're going to want to look back to September the 14th because that's when the new moon in Virgo happened. So whatever seeds you kind of planted for yourself in that time, things have now come to fruition. And one of the things I love to do is like scroll back through your cell phone and look to see the pictures of that time frame and see what was going on in your life because we can't even remember yesterday, never mind six months ago. But if you can start to put this into practice, you will be more mindful about what you're calling in under certain moons. Now, when the sun is on the opposite side of the moon, this is a full moon. You can see that this one is happening at five degrees, 23 minutes of Virgo because we're at the moon here, right? But the sun is conjunct Saturn and conjunct Mercury. And Mercury is the ruler of this full moon. What's he doing? He's hanging out in Pisces, wanting things to be more flow, more creative. He's probably tuned in and tapped into the powers that be. So if you are in meditation, if you're doing more mindful work, more spiritual work, like this is the time to really let yourself explore all the facets of who you are spiritually. We also have Neptune, of course, who's been here for a while in Pisces, but this is amplifying that energy and really encouraging you to be more creative, to think about things in a more creative way. What could that look like, you may ask? Well, maybe you take a pottery class. Maybe you get back to drawing. Maybe you want to sing. Maybe you want to explore gardening or you're planting some seeds right now. And that is something that you want to spend time building structure around as a spiritual practice, having Saturn conjunct right there. It's like 
you know, all right, let's put some structure around this. But Saturn in Pisces to me is about like unleashing the creatives into the world to go and do their thing. So that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. I also wanted to mention that this moon is making a trine positive aspect. Yay. Over here to Jupiter. And we love the energy of Jupiter. He just wants to expand and make things bigger and better. So whatever we are feeling, remember, moon is about our feelings, our emotional set point. It's going to get bigger. So if you're feeling, you know, um, my dreams didn't come to fruition yet. I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling annoyed. I'm feeling like it's not moving fast enough. Well, what do you think will expand under this new moon? Those feelings. So it's really important that you check yourself before you wreck yourself. Watch what you're thinking about or not watch, you know, pay attention to whatever you want to do. But like focusing very much on where your mind is, because that is where your energy will go. And that is where your attention is going to be as you expand into more of that. So what I highly recommend is while you are in this creative and fluxy time with this full moon, finding the celebration for what has been and what is working, okay? So there has to be something that is working in your life right now. If it's not your business stuff, maybe there's something in your personal life. Maybe you're feeling really good about yourself and you're feeling really filled with potential. Focus your attention and your energy on that. That is one thing I will highly recommend during this, this full moon, because you want to make sure that there is a, an attitude of gratitude and always a full, you know, this, the full fruition, like, yes, I made it amazing. And here we are, here we go. Okay. If things are needing to be rejudged, you can rejudge them. Um, the other thing I'm going to try to stop saying, um, but I'm probably not going to do that. <laughs> Venus is squaring Jupiter. Now, what does this mean? Well, Venus here, beautiful goddess Venus, is still conjunct Mars in Aquarius, and she's making a square, which can be a challenging aspect to Jupiter and Taurus. Remember, Venus rules Taurus. So she's kind of the boss when it comes to this aspect, but... There is this sense of um, a little bit of a slowdown, a little bit of a, 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 a frustration potentially. Like when we have a square, it's a challenge, but that challenge is there to help us. So I always like to think about Anne Orley, and I know I say this all the time, but when you're sitting in a seated position, you are in your knees are in a 90 degree angle with your feet to the floor. So you have to have that square to get up and elevate yourself to the next level. This is what's happening. So there's this slowdown. It's like, okay, have we been overspending? Where are we giving too much? Where are we not getting enough? Like this is that play between Mars and Venus. Remember, Venus is about receptivity. She's about, you know, really wanting to bring things together. And she is, when she's in Aquarius, when they're in Aquarius though, it's a little bit cooler. It's not as warm and loving as when she's in Pisces. And Mars is sever, separation. He's trying to kind of bring in the, that colder aspect of like, hey, we got to just get this done and this is how we're going to do it. And do, 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 where she's like, but what if we looked at it this way? So there's a bit of a harmony with them. They're trying to figure it out and get in love. And then we have a little bit of a challenge with that Jupiter. So pay attention to those things. Like where am I out of balance in my doing and receiving and where am I feeling frustrated about what I'm trying to build it's not moving fast enough it's not having fast enough it's it's feeling like a frustration it's just a slow down to maybe rejig like maybe you're too much in action and not waiting to see what's coming towards you you know and you're missing you're missing the opportunities and the experiences that are meant for you because you're trying to force it or push it to be now we also still have this energy that's here of the North Node and Chiron and Aries. This is a deep healing, 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 healing aspect. It is really calling us into more of our independence, more of our trailblazing abilities, healing the parts of ourselves that have felt diminished, that have felt hurt, that have felt like we couldn't be ourselves. Like if you want to just go do your thing and create a YouTube channel, now's the time. Now's the time. 
go and do it. And to the haters, you know, whatever, what are they doing? Like probably nothing. At least you're doing something. It's going to move your life forward, improve it, expand where you're going. It's going to feel so good. And it's always people who have time to say something negative about your work that literally don't have much going on. So I'm just going to leave that there and leave that right where it is. And we're going to move into the human design. So remember, there are a ton of astrologers sharing amazing insights for you around the astrology of the day, the astrology of the moons. But I really want to give you the quick, like, punchy gist so that you have an idea. Hold on, where the hell did the chart go? Voila, the human design chart. Okay. Don't get all overwhelmed with this stuff. You're focusing here. For those of you who are brand new to human design, again, don't worry about the chart. Lean into the vibes. How does this feel for me? Okay, cool. How am I going to work with this energy? That's it. Now, when we have, uh, I will run through the centers. I think it's really important to know, especially if you're brand new, everything that is white is open. This just means that you are amplifying this energy from the people around you the experiences around you, the places that you're in. Whereas when it's defined, like this is the energy you, that is consistent to you that you kind of have mastered or you're, you're mastering, or you just feel very comfortable with, you know, it it's there for you on demand where this is more of an experiential energy when it's open. Okay. So when you're looking at your own chart and I just want to say this too, your natal charts, your natal birth chart for your astrology, your natal birth chart for your human design, these reign supreme. They're always the first like filter, okay? Looking at specific transits are just a little bit of icing on the cake, okay? It's to help you figure out, oh, this could feel like this for me at this time because we're always moving through such big energy, it can feel like a lot. And looking at transits can help you to just understand, oh, maybe that's why I'm feeling this way today or this month or this week or whatever. But your natal chart is really what you want to get most intimately familiar with because it is the one that is always, always, always what you look at first to understand why things are maybe being experienced the way they are. Now, when we look at this openness, okay, this just means that we are going to be really experiencing so much in the head, in the ajna, in the throat, in our heart center, our G center, the will center, and the emotional solar plexus center. So you will all be overly um, tuned and tapped in. You'll be feeling all the feels of the collective, and you may feel a little bit overwhelmed. Okay, I'm just going to say that it just is, may potentially feel like a lot. If it does, it is very important to ground yourself. Okay, and we're going to ground our, our uh, we're going to ground ourselves through being sustainable. What does that mean? Well, that sustainability is about really crafting super sweet partnerships. Okay, crafting partnerships that, you know, really help you feel like you have more potential because you're not lacking things. So putting yourself into relationships and positions that feel supportive, nourishing, nurturing, okay? That is gonna be really important to you in this time. So let's go through all of the chart quickly here. Let's look at the sun who's in the gate 55. This is the gate of faith, okay? Having this sense of faith, like it's gonna be okay, Everything is going to work out perfectly. All I need to do is align myself with the, the most creative vibe I can and allow the emotions to flow through. If you block the emotions, it's like that hose is going to burst. So let it go. If you need to have a good cry out on this full moon, do it. Let it go. Um, feeling what comes up as opposed to trying to numb it because Neptune in Pisces can make us want to numb out, okay? Get caught up in the things that are overindulging of whatever it is, all of the things. So just watch yourself there. Um, we talked about the sustainability piece and that's how we're gonna really ground ourselves. And um, when we think about, okay, well, where is, okay, where is the gate 50, uh, 
nine. It's right here off the sacral. Remember, this is the sacral center is our like creativity. It's our ability. And, and some people will argue with me on this and that's fine. But like, I look at it as like your life force, workforce, most creative and powerful energy that comes off this gut level knowing like, this is the right person for me to collab with. This is not, you're just going to know. And this is about trusting that part of you and getting into that, you know, really deeply exploring these intuitive parts of yourself is going to be a game changer over the next little while. North node is in the gate 51. Who's been here for a while and Chiron is here. Remember we talked, they were conjunct in Aries. They're hanging out here in gate 51. Gate 51 runs off of your will center. This is about, you know, your ability to have the willpower. And it's like, where have you been um, running on fumes in your willpower? And there's some healing that needs to be done here for you. This can be another aha. And we're in this time where that conjunction is getting closer and closer. So there is a wound opening up here, you know, deeper for us so that we can heal and move forward into the next iteration. North Node is involved. So it's where we're going in this lifetime. So where are you running on fumes as far as you're chasing down a path, but it feels like I'm not getting anywhere. Okay, well, maybe it's time to pivot. So stay open to the pivot, right? Uh, then we're going to look at gate 57. Gate 57 is the south node. My mouse is frozen right now, so I'm just going to keep talking. Um, but it's over on the spleen center. What's going on here? He's over here. <laughs> so you can see that the 57 is actually making an unconscious connection. Now I know this might going to just feel this, okay? People who have this natally, okay? They're the people you want to follow uh, if there's a burning building. Like you want to follow these people because they know exactly intuitively how to get out of there. All right. So there, it's very auditory. It's like they hear things and it's trust them, trust in that. So you may be hearing things right now. <laughs> and you're probably like, wait, what? Oh, I'm hearing all kinds of things. But it's like, listen, if you're getting buzzing, if you're getting things like you're just, there's things you're just, oh, I want you to pay attention to that over this next couple of days because there may be something here for you, okay? A gift, something powerful. Remember, this is also South Node. So it's like, we're comfortable here in this energy in our nail chart, but we're playing with this energy in a transit. Again, the moon is in the 59, which is that sustainability piece. Mercury's in the 55, which is the same as the sun because they are conjunct, don't forget. And that's the piece of faith, okay? It's really important to have, keep and hold your faith through this period because it's we're feeling like deeply vulnerable, deeply sensitive, deeply attuned to the environment. So that leads me to Venus, who is actually sitting in the gate of attunement. And so is Mars, because if you remember, they were conjunct in Aquarius. This gate of attunement is... Like this is again, a, it's just a double amplification of how much you're feeling. So not only do you have this auditory gift, you're feeling so tuned into the environment that if things feel funky, I want you to trust that. And I know that can be really difficult because your mind is going to want to override how you're feeling, especially because it's an Aquarian, like they're in Aquarius, right? But this is how do I feel the frequency of the room, of my relationships, of what I'm doing for work? Um, you know, how do I let myself tune into the environment so that I can move forward from there? So maybe you're creating something and you get this like, my audience would love this. Um, my partner would love this. Like that's this type of, you know, or are you walk into a space and all of a sudden you're like, oh, you get the heebie-jeebies and you got to get out of there trust that. Okay. Next is Jupiter in the gate 24. That's the gate of blessings. Okay. And when we think about the gate of blessings, it really is about, you know, how we have experienced things in our lives that maybe felt like felt challenging to us, but they've gifted us with something that this is that, you know, expanding gift. And remember what you're thinking about is going to create this expansion 
especially with the moon, especially with that challenge from Venus. So lean into, okay, I've got to really watch where my mind is because that is going to dictate what I'm calling in with my heart, all right? Then we've got Saturn in the gate 37. And you remember that the sun is conjunct Saturn too. And that is happening um, in the chart. Now, you'll see the sun in gate 55 and you'll see Saturn in gate 37 but tomorrow i'm recording this on friday so on sunday the 25th will be when the sun ticks over into gate 37 gate 37 is about peace okay so we're tuning into all the things on the saturday for the full moon and we're feeling it even beforehand but then it starts to go into this feeling of it is what it is I am here for all of it. I signed up for this experience. I'm here to experience all of the things. So let yourself find as much peace and tranquility and calm as possible to help you navigate these emotional waves, all right? Then we've talked about Chiron, who's in the gate 51. That's that gate of initiation or shock, kind of shocking us back on our path a little bit. Now, when I say that, I don't want you to be concerned or worried just to be aware that if you're off track anywhere in your life, if you're overdoing all the things and you're burning yourself out to a crisp here, the universe is going to step in and be like, boom, let's go this way. Okay. And you're like, oh, okay. Never saw that one coming. Now, um, Uranus here is in gate 23. Um, gate 23 is about transmission. This is where, you know, things can come out of your mouth intuitively very quickly, but it may not quite land with people. So if you're having trouble communicating, as you can see, I am a little bit today myself and I have a defined throat. So there is this energy of tripping yourself up. And if you're tripping yourself up, if your words, you keep stumbling over the things, take a break and ask yourself, is this something that I even need to be sharing? Or am I just sharing to share? Do I just feel like I need to be heard, okay? That can be that energy, pearls of wisdom. It's not for everybody, right? Uh, we talked about the gate 36. The gate 36 is Neptune. Again, this is a very highly emotional and creative connection. It's called the gate of um, exploration. And remember, it's Pisces season. So Neptune is at home here. And it can make us very dreamy. So let yourself go to that meditative place, explore all the options of your creativity. And then of course, Pluto, which has been in gate 60 for what feels like forever. This is the gate of conservation where we focus our attention to what is working as opposed to what is not working. And this is obviously a challenge for many of us, but there you go. There you have it. Now I'm going to come back to you here and I'm going to talk to you where you've made it to the end. Thank you so much for being here. Honestly, your feedback, your comments, your likes, subscribes, and all that fun stuff helps me to build this channel. It also lets me know you like what I'm putting out. So it's very lovely when I get your comments telling me about the things that you can resonate with and what you'd like to see more of. Let me know. Now let's talk about the, uh, Aura types, let's get down to business when we're looking at, and remember, if you don't know your aura type, it's super easy. You can message me and I'll give you the link to go and get your free chart. Uh, I'll also put it in the description below so that you can go and get that and know your aura type. That's different from your sun, moon, and rising. Uh, it's very much human design and it's a real game changer when it comes to showing up energetically in your life. So manifesting generators, here's what's up for you today. You may feel the pull to get down to business. Like it's time to get to work. You're, you're probably like, you've got a long list and you're knocking off all the things off your list. You've got 500 screens open on your computer. You're in Canva designing and doing all this stuff and you're uploading it right away. That's good. Chase the things that are feeling exciting to you, okay? The ones that feel most exciting, spend more time on. Things that are feeling less exciting, get them off your plate, give them to somebody else, 
uh, and focus on what's next. Okay. This is an energy of focusing on what you want to move into, but also, especially under this full moon, celebrating what has been, how far you've come and then burning it and letting it go with gratitude. You know, maybe you want to do a burning and releasing ceremony on this full moon. That would be perfect. Do that. My generators may feel like you're kind of starting to recalibrate your energy. You are the lighthouses and the beacons. And sometimes you need time to go in and to refuel and revitalize your energy. You're not always meant to be shining that light 24 seven, you know, as a, as a beacon of light and a lighthouse, sometimes you need a break. Okay. So if you need a break to recalibrate, to re um, jig your energy, really letting yourself pay attention to how you're feeling in your current location. You may even feel like it's time for a move. You may feel like you just need to get up from your desk. It's, it doesn't need to be a cross-country move or a big move. It could be just like, you need to move your office. You need to move, move some furniture around to free up some energy. Do that um, because you're reconsidering a lot of things right now and that's okay. Let it be easy and light. It doesn't need to be hard and a slog. This can be like, creative, flowy energy while we're in Pisces season. My projectors, you are finally leaning back and into your flow. Kind of feels like things are clicking a little bit easier for you and you're recognizing parts of your wisdom and intuition that you may not have realized before, or you're just feeling a little bit more powerful and tuned in in this particular season, which is kind of nice and exciting because I feel like a lot of you, a lot of my clients who are, are projectors have been doubting themselves for so long that it feels very liberating to be like, I know what exactly is going on here. So let that kind of, let that marinate, but just tune into the subtleties and the details and let spirit speak to you, okay? Now, my manifestors, you are honing in your craft right now. So I can just get this sense of like, you're honing in all the juicy stuff. You are learning how to speak up. And I know informing is something we're supposed to be doing, period. But it's like, you're not afraid. There's honestly this really beautiful, authentic, fun and vibrant energy that seems to be emanating from the manifestors in my life. So it's really exciting. And uh, I would challenge you to test new waters, test new waters. And um, yeah, don't fight against the resistance of maybe something feels a little bit uncomfortable or scary, but ask yourself, is this fear or excitement? And if it's, if you're not sure, jump forward and see what happens. And then you can always, you know, make a different choice. My reflectors, you, my friends, are being called in such a powerful way right now. There is this new spiritual uh, integrity coming forward and radiating from you. I get this sense that you are going deeper into the lunar cycle. Now, it's something that's been coming up a lot in conversation. I've been hearing it uh, lunar cycle. And I'm in a medical astrology course right now with Kira Sutherland. She talked about the lunar cycle. So stay with me, my reflectors, because you must follow the lunar cycle. If you are a reflector who isn't following, you know, your moon cycle, because let's say you, you don't have, um, you don't bleed anymore. Let's just leave it at that. Um, you may, want to look into your lunar cycle, especially if you're not syncing with the regular moon cycle, something to look into and dive deeper in. Um, I will say that my friend Dominique is looking down this path as well. So I will hook you guys up with her contact below and you can check her out too. Cause she talks a lot. She will be talking more about the moon uh, as things progress. I know because we're business besties and we go deep into the things. So yeah, it's just this element of aligning so deeply with that moon cycle, paying close attention to where's the moon today? Where's the moon today? How do I feel today? What's coming up for me? And then giving yourself a chance to catch up with that. So it's not just that awareness, the mental awareness, but it's like actually bringing it into that heart and down and be like, how does this actually feel for me today? Like, where do I feel a little off? So 
because you are so tuned in my reflectors into this spiritual path and spiritual alignment, it's like you're stepping into that more fully. And I feel like this lunar cycle will help give you even more confidence. Okay. That's it. Thank you so much for being here. Happy full moon in Virgo, everyone. If you would like to learn more about my process, how I work with clients, uh, some of the exciting things that I'm working on right now is badass branding with your astrology for female entrepreneurs and creatives. I'm going to drop that beautiful guidebook below. It's totally free. And a week from now, I'm going to be doing a workshop to take you deeper into uh, that astrology piece with your branding because it has transformed my life and many of my clients' lives. It's just been such an epic ride for the last like couple of months that I can't wait for you to experience the power of that as well. And you know what? Let's pull a card before I set you free on your weekends and into your day or whatever you're into right now. Maybe it's going to bed. Let's pull a couple cards and just get a vibe of anything else that you might need to know. All right. I'm going to pull three cards. The first one is the heart chakra. And I pulled that, I don't know, it's the heart chakra card. The next one up is the dreams card, which is so appropriate for this Pisces season and the indulgence card. I love all of these. I'm going to show you the cards. All right. So you saw, this is the heart chakra card. This is from the little sage deck. This is the dreams card. And this is the indulgence card. Now there's an element here. This is the second time I pulled heart chakra today. So it's very clear to me that it's so important of like, how do we kind of bridge those higher chakras and lower chakras come to your heart? Whenever you feel like you're floating in cosmic land and you're like, I am not even grounded, go and eat something, root yourself back down. Or if you're feeling too heavy, you know, lighten the load by meditating or giving yourself just a break, step away from your computer. And the indulgence card is, you know, that dreamy first, the dreams card is about letting yourself explore all the realms, you know, lots of possibility and potential during this season. It's not like you have to figure it all out. It's just like being open and receptive to the auditory, that intuitive. Ooh, yeah, do that. That sounds good. It's kind of really letting yourself lean into that energy and indulging in it. There you go. So much love to all of you. I can't wait to see you on the next video. Take care and have a beautiful weekend ahead.